Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the 78 inch Extra NG from Extreme Flight. If you follow the channel, you know I've already done a 78 inch Extra NG. The problem was that was red and silver. And I really, after looking at it, I really kind of wanted this one and Dave wanted the red and silver one. So we worked out a little deal. He's got the red and silver one. I got the blue and white one. So we're just gonna take a first look at this beautiful airplane by Extreme Flight. Let's cover the specifications on this beautiful plane. The wingspan is 78 inches. The length is 80.5 inches. It's got a wing area of 1,225 square inches. The weight is listed as 14 pounds. I believe that's the all up weight. After we build it, we'll weigh it and let you know before we fly it. It requires five full-size Metal Gear servos. And for the power plant, in my case, I'm running electric. So you're looking at a 40cc brushless motor and the ESC is somewhere around 130 amps. So about 130 amp ESC. I'll be sticking a Mantis G2 in this one. So Mantis G2 ESC. And for batteries, you're looking at two 6S, somewhere between 3,700 and 4,000 milliamp hours. I have flown this before. I believe I use the 4,000 milliamp hour batteries in this one. And I will be powering the servos via a standalone 2S 2200 battery. So three batteries to get this one going. And then as far as the prop goes, a 22 by 10 electric motor. You also need some servo extensions, obviously, to reach from the back all the way to the front. You need two six inches for the receiver to the ailerons. You need two 12 inches for the aileron servos into the fuselage itself. And then you need two 36 inch extensions for the elevators. I do wanna spend just a moment on the motor. This motor was sent to me by T-Motor. It is the AM780. And this one is not available in retail yet. I expect it'll be coming out soon because this is basically production ready. But this is the T-Motor AM780. That's what's going in this plane. Now let's take a look at the hardware. I like to look at the cowl first. Look at that baby, isn't that pretty? A little bit of dust on there, don't let that fool you. But the cowl is beautiful. It's got this white, blue, silver, and yellow scheme up front. And that's actually two shades of blue. That's a little bit darker than that blue. With a nice yellow pinstripe right there, just beautiful. Silver graphics along the side, nice big openings up front, and they do include baffling for the inside. So you can glue this baffling inside to direct air over the motor. That goes in right here around these openings and there's a big opening on the bottom. So plenty of air intake. There always is on extreme flight planes. They take great care to make sure you've got good airflow. The other thing I really like about extreme flight cowls, they have this wood ring that's already affixed on the inside of the cowl. And there are a couple of blind nuts, one here, one here, and there's a block right here with the blind nut on the bottom. And this just kind of screws onto the canopy. It's very simple to install these. If you've ever had to install the plastic canopies using the tape method, getting the alignment just right so your graphics line up and your motor hole is centered over the motor, that can be a real challenge. On the extreme flight planes, you just stick it on and screw it in and you're done. <laughs> Literally, for other planes, it's like a 30, 40 minute job. They turn this into a two minute job. It's one of, one of the cool features about extreme flight planes. I like that a lot. And just like we come to expect with extreme flight, the quality, the paint job on this is really, really nice. I don't see any flaws at all. It looks really good. Beautiful. And since we're talking about molded parts, let's take a look at the wheel pants. Nice paint job on those. There's a wood block already installed with a blind nut right there. So when you attach these to the landing gear, a screw goes into that blind nut and they're just on there. So really simple installation on these. And of course they're slotted to match up with the gear right there. There's a slot right there. So the landing main gear goes right in that slot and screws in. Very simple to align and attach. So another nice feature on the assembly for extreme flight planes. They just do little details like that that make the job quite a bit easier for the modeler. And the last bit of hardware for the landing gear are the fuselage skirts and they already put the rubber molding on and glue those on so that's already done for you and again these just slide onto the landing gear and they go up against the fuselage to give it that nice finished look for the gear so nice job painted blue to match and they of course they look fine. To wrap up the gear, here's a look at the carbon fiber landing gear. These are definitely top shelf pieces. I've flown a lot of extreme flight planes and their bigger planes rely on these carbon fiber landing gear mains and they're very sturdy, little bit of spring, it's just right. They tend to work just perfectly on extreme flight planes. And then on the top, you can see the thickness right here. It's probably about four or five millimeters. Very nice piece. They have these dialed in just right. They're perfect for the size plane. And then to wrap up the landing gear, there's a look at the tail wheel. Super simple assembly. You just screw that into the fuselage. 
This will go through an eyelet on the bottom of the rudder, and you've got your tailwheel right there. Already assembled, all the work's already done for you, just screw it onto the airplane. So, very nice. Here's a bag with a couple of pieces of wood for servo adapters and servo plates, depending on your configuration. And then on the bottom, there's this little fiberglass infused piece that is there for airflow. So on the bottom of the airplane, on the fuselage, you open up a hole, you screw that in. And what I like about that is it gives it a very nice finished look. Here's a look at the hardware bag. And I choose not to open this one up until it's ready to be built because there's a lot going on in here. So you've got the wheels, you've got all the servo connections, the connecting rods, the push rods, the control arms, everything is inside this bag. It's a very complete bag of hardware and extreme flight hardware has always been very good. You'll be spending a little bit of time putting this one together. All right, let's get to the shiny bits. But first for you electronics gurus and tinkers out there, check out PCBWay.com. PCBWay has a full suite of services available to make your ideas a reality, including PCB manufacturing and assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, and injection molding. When you're ready to order, PCBWay provides instant quotes, real-time production tracking, and you can order as few as five boards at a time, which is great for early stage projects. If you need an experienced partner to help bring your ideas to life, check out PCBWay.com. I have a link in the description if you'd like to give them a look. Here's a look at the rudder. Look at that shrink covering, isn't that nice? Look at the scheme, man. Blue, yellow, lighter blue, silver, white, black, silver. I mean, it's a complicated scheme. There's a lot of work that goes into these, which is why they always look so good. And then notice is they've got the pin hinges already installed and these are glued in on this, this side, I think. Yeah, they feel like those are glued in. I don't wanna to pull too hard, but yeah, I feel that those are glued in. And then here are the slots on the port side for the rudder pull-pull. Here are the slots on the starboard side for the rudder pull-pull. So you got two sets of slots and the arm goes right through there and you glue that in place and then you have a pull-pull arrangement for the rudder. So the rudder looks fantastic. I'm looking at the trailing edge right now. Looks very straight, nice and straight, beautiful work. No issues with the covering. It, you don't even have to tighten it up with your iron. I know it's a good idea to kind of seal the edges before you fly for the first time. That's never a terrible idea. But as far as the shrink covering goes, there's no real work to do. There aren't any wrinkles or bubbles. It's just perfect. Next up are the side force generators, and these are keyed for the quick release. So you can see there's, there's a hole there and it's keyed. So you put the thumb screws in the edge of the wing, you stick it on, and then you pull it aft. And when you do that, you tighten down the thumb screws and the side force generators are on in case you choose to use those. And of course, they're color coded to match. Here's a look at one of the elevator halves. So this is the horizontal stabilizer. I always get a laugh out of this because the horizontal stabilizer is smaller than the control surface itself. And as you can see, that's already pre-hinged and sealed. So they've got white shrink covering right there over the gap. And the shrink covering aligns perfectly over the pinned hinges, just beautiful. The workmanship on these planes is just really something else. And then these are also quick release stabilizers. So these two screws, they go into the airframe and then there's a lock. It's just a latching mechanism like they use on the canopy actually. And it latches onto those two screws, kind of a guillotine. And of course there's a spar that goes in there to keep everything straight and where it's supposed to be. So in terms of the shrink covering, again, just fantastic. Look at that, <laughs> isn't that nice? No wrinkles, no bubbles, no peeling. Everything lines up just the way it's supposed to. Of course, because we're dealing with some complex angles there, when we fold that up, that's off a little bit, but when you have it straight, it is exactly lined up the way it's supposed to be. Just beautiful, beautiful work. And here's a look at the port side stabilizer and elevator. Again, hinged already and completely flexible, very floppy, very good, nice. And the shrink covering looks fantastic. There's a look down the leading edge, which of course is gonna be perfectly straight. And there's a look down the trailing edge, and also that looks perfectly straight. And here's a look at the bottom, the bright color scheme on the bottom, blue and yellow. So again, from an orientation perspective, this very different contrasty look will look amazing in the air. I know it's just gonna look fantastic. So very bright colors on this one, that bright pop of yellow, and then white when you're looking at the top, just perfect. Next up is the starboard wing. And again, the shrink covering is, it's perfect. I mean, I know a lot of you guys know how to do this kind of work and I've done shrink covering in the past, but I can tell you one thing, I would never get it looking this good. I just don't have a skill to do it. I just don't have that kind of skill. Maybe I could develop it at some point, but they just do the hard work for us. I mean, it's just a beautiful color scheme. Again, you got dark blue, yellow, light blue, silver, white, black, very nice. 
Very attractive looking color scheme. And then take a look at the hinges again. See how those are pinned in there? And you've got this heat shrink seal right over the gap. That's good for airflow. It just makes the control surface far more effective because you're not losing any air pressure through the gap. So just a really nice, really nice. There's a look down the trailing edge of the aileron and that looks perfect to me. And then here's a look at the leading edge. Also looks perfectly straight. Here's a look at the bottom of the wing. Again, a really nice contrasty scheme with the blue, the yellow, and the white. I love it. That's gonna look so good, man. I just know that's gonna look amazing. And then on the wing root, we've got an incidence alignment pin here. We've got the quick release bolt that's already adjusted. So you basically slide the wing on and that bolt's already adjusted for the guillotine, which just goes down and captures that and holds the wing on. And then on the back, you've got a small spar tube for alignment and then the main spar tube right here. And here's a look at the port wing. We're just taking a look at this one for QA purposes, just so you can see how the entire kit comes together out of the box. Same deal on the control surface. They're already pre-assembled with pin hinges and there's a shrink covering over the gap. So that looks fantastic. And then on the bottom of the wing, just to take a look and make sure everything looks like it's in good order. I don't see any problems here at all. Looks fantastic. No rips, no tears, no alignment problems. Very, very nice. Isn't that a nice looking scheme? I love it. Finally, for the airframe, we're on to the guest of honor. So here's a quick look at the canopy. And they do have a plastic covering on the canopy. That's just there to prevent scratches, but that comes off. That's, that's not damage. That's just a protective covering or protective film that's on there to protect it during shipping. And then here's a look at the underside of the canopy. Plenty of room in there. If you wanna do something like put a deck in and put a pilot, there's no problem doing that. Plenty of room to do that. One of the very cool features about later extreme flight planes is that they use quick release wings. But in addition to that, they also have an indicator so that if your quick release is unlocked or in the up position, you can't put the canopy on because it bumps into that tab. So you have to make sure that that is pushed down before you can put your canopy down. And that's just a nice little safety feature to make sure you don't take off with your wing locks unlocked. And then to latch the canopy to the airframe, there are two latches, one on each side, and you just pull this little pin out and slide it forward, and that's it. Your canopy is latched on there, and that's not going anywhere. It's locked in. Then finally, we'll take a look at the fuselage itself. Regarding the motor box up front, the box is already assembled and glued. The only thing you have to do is line up your motor mounts and install. So if you're using an electric motor, for example, you have to use standoffs. You have to drill those out and install those on the firewall. And that's about it. So the box itself is already done. No work to do there. And then one of the things Extreme Flight is known for, of course, is their durability and strength. So they have this hybrid balsa configuration method where they use this fiberglass overlay on top of the wood inside and that's fused together and it adds an incredible amount of strength to the interior of this airframe and you can see they've got that fiberglass installed everywhere you where you need it so the battery tray your equipment deck your pull pull servo it's all there all kinds of fiberglass inside this plane for durability another really nice feature about the interior of the fuselage is they have a tube that's installed for your servo wires that go to the back. So you don't have to worry about fishing them through the formers or getting them into these little hooks or anything. All your servo extensions just run in that little tube right there and that goes all the way back and keeps everything nice and tidy. So very thoughtful interior design on this model. On the belly of the fuselage, I mentioned earlier that you have to open up a section for airflow. So they have it set up if you're using an IC motor and you're not worried about airflow, it's already sealed up and you're ready to go. But if you're flying electric and you want to move some air through the fuselage, you can open up that hole and then put that little plate on that I talked about earlier. Another nice feature about extreme flight planes is where the landing gear attaches the fuselage. The landing gear can only go on one way. So they arrange the holes on the airframe and on the landing gear so you always get it installed aiming the correct direction. So that's just a really nice feature. And then here's a look at the shrink covering on the bottom of the plane which just like everything else we've talked about so far, shrink covering looks absolutely fantastic. I don't see any problems there at all. Here's a look at the port side of the fuselage. We're just looking for defects and making sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be. Looking for issues with the shrink covering to make sure that there's no work that needs to be done before we actually put it up in the air and fly it. So I don't see any problems there. The vertical stabilizer looks good and all the shrink covering, perfect, just perfect. 
Another thing I really like about these larger extreme flight planes is the quick release mechanism for the horizontal stabilizer. So you can see right here, we've got a hole for a spar tube and a couple of incidence alignment pins and a quick release. So you basically put your spar tubes in, put your stabilizers on, connect your servo wire, and then use the quick release to latch it and you're ready to go fly. And it breaks down just as easy. So if you're gonna be transporting this in a tight space, the stabilizer comes off fairly simple. No, no real problem there. Also from an assembly perspective, that saves quite a bit of time because you're no longer worried about alignment. The alignment's gonna be right, right out of the factory. So it'll be square and perpendicular and have equidistance between the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer and the trailing edge of the wing, which is really important. And you also won't have any warps or twists. So the extreme flight jigs are really good on that part for the empennage. Everything is always square back there. And this just makes life a lot easier when it comes to putting these planes together. Finally, we'll take a look at the starboard side shrink covering just to make sure there are no problems there. And I'm not seeing anything. Nope, looks good. Just perfect. The last thing I'd like to show you is the lengths Extreme Flight goes to to give you protection for the airplane for both transport and use at the field. One of the really cool features is this insulating material that drops in right on top of the canopy. And the idea here is that it protects your internals of the plane from direct sunlight. So it gets very hot out on a fly day and those canopies turn into big magnifying glasses. So by dropping that on, you protect not only the canopy and the shrink covering, but your electronics inside. And then for transporting your plane to and from the field, they give one small bag that's for your horizontal stabilizer and elevator. And that's got a Velcro enclosure and it's got a little pocket inside to hold your spar tube so your spar tubes don't get lost during transport as well. It's very well thought out, it's nice design. And finally, you have the same type of bag for your main wing. So Velcro enclosure, big enough to hold your wings. Both wings go in there. There's a little pocket for your spar tubes and they even have a nice little carry handle right here. So when you're going to the field and you've got your wings off, they stay nice and protected during transport. And I can tell you right now, I store my wings in these bags and when I go to the field, they show up in these bags. It's just a very nice little feature. And that's included with the set. You don't have to spend extra for that. It's included in the price of the airplane. And if you choose to use them, Extreme Flight includes a very nice little decal set. I normally don't do decals because I kind of like the plane just the way it looks. I might stick one or two on here and there, maybe the extra NG logo or something, but I love the way the airplane looks. So I probably won't do too much in the form of decals, but if you want them, you've got that option. That wraps up my first look at the 78 inch Extreme Flight Extra NG. We'll get this plane put together and out to the field for a maiden just as soon as we can. And I'll be flying with that shiny new AM780 motor, so keep an eye out for information there. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe, smash that thumbs up button, and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. And go fly something. It requires, it requires five full-size Metal Gear servos. It requires five full-size Metal Gear servos. And for the power plant, you're looking at a 40cc motor. It requires five full-size Metal Gear servos. And for the power plant, it requires a 40cc motor. And it requires five full-size servos. It requires five full-size Metal Gear servos. And for the power plant, you're looking at a 40cc. It requires five, oh, come on.